Look, here are the people we saved. They're exiting the portal. Wonderful. Yeah, these guys made it, but think of how many got toasted. Ooh. Anyway, where are we? This looks like an old Greek settlement. We can re-establish ourselves here. It looks so peaceful here. With no Aztecs, it's the perfect place to build up and get more followers. There is already a town center, a storehouse, and a field which we can use. The green ring you see is the extent of your influence. You can only do things within this ring. You can extend the green influence ring by placing more buildings and having more people. When you're ready to learn how to feed your people, click on the gold scroll over the field, leader. Your villagers are going to need food very soon, leader. Move your hand over this field, then click and hold the action button to pick up the grain. When you've got 200 food in your hand, drop all through it into the storehouse. Ah, we now have enough food. We need to get our people working if we want to rebuild, boss. Villagers can be turned into disciples who will work at the job you assign them. Pick up a villager, then put them down on a field. <coughs> now place the villager down over the field. Those farmers can handle that small field with no problem, boss. We need wood if our villages have to build and our town expand. Grab and pull a tree out of the ground and drop it into the storehouse. Now put it in the storehouse. We could really do with some disciple foresters to collect wood for us. Pick up a villager and drop them next to a tree to make them a disciple forester. Make a total of three foresters. We got some nifty forest thing going on, boss. Disciple mine worker. Disciple mine worker. The statues on your town center represent your town's desires. This shows what your people would like to build next. Keeping your people happy is important, and they will let you know if they desire a building type. See how the statue is carrying grain? That represents the people's desires for food. If they need ore or wood, they will let you know. Keep an eye on the statue, as it will change. This plinth's height represents how good or evil you are. From its top, a flame or a fountain will spring as you perform evil or good acts. The whole city will shift to show you if you are good or evil. This statue lets you know your people's desires. Watch the height of the statue. The higher it is, the more they need their desire. This scroll shows the impressiveness of your city, its population, and happiness. There is plenty of other useful information about your growing metropolis. Refer to it often. Hold your hand over the statues and leave it there to get more detail. Your people desire houses. Move your hand over the rotating building, then click and hold the action button to drag it off. We'll need the right buildings and food if we're gonna support a powerful army. 
Click the action button again to place it down. That's right. Well, keep going. We can speed it up by picking up a tree and dropping it on the building. You can also drag a building blueprint off an existing house. Move your hand over the existing house. Hold down the action button and drag to get the blueprint. If you want to cancel an action and empty your hand, simply shake it briskly left and right. See the pile of wood there? Your villagers will use that to build the house with. Disciple Builder. Disciple Builder. You've created a number of disciples, so why not create some more? Disciple Builder. <laughs> The house is finished, and look how delighted the villagers are. No, that's not right. The green ring you see is the extent of your influence. You can also help to build buildings yourself. This is God building. Yes, you do it by picking up resources the building needs. Then hold your hand over the building and press and hold the action button. This is very useful, but you do lose some of the resource in the process. Good. You've built enough houses for now. We must get the people to multiply. Oh dear, it's embarrassing talking about this. No, it ain't. He's talking about breeding. Breeding, boys. <laughs> you hear me, Goody? We need three breeder disciples to satisfy the village's needs. Drop a man or woman from your hand next to one of the opposite sex. Disciple breeders will continue forever. Marvelous. You've now created enough breeders. Any disciple will carry on doing that one job forever, unless you give them another job. What we need to do is increase our population. Now we've got some breeders, it should be easy to get 75 villages. <laughs> Disciple breeder. <laughs> Disciple breeder. Click the gold scroll when you are ready to learn about the toolbar. Right, let's open the toolbar. 
See, there is a flag at the bottom left of the screen. All you need to do to open it is click the action button on it once. Hey, what's that? That is the toolbar. Good. Now click again to close it. Open it up again. The toolbar holds a series of menus. These tabs are used to navigate the different menus. The tab currently selected is the construction tab. So the menu shown is the construction menu. Each menu is divided into sub-menus. We're going to show you how to access some advanced features. Press F4 to bring up the tribute menu. This is the coolest part of the menu. The tribute is like a form of currency. You can spend it on whatever you like, including new buildings. You can improve your godly powers and add constructions or features to your town. You earn tribute by finishing challenges and doing other impressive things. We have plenty of tribute at the moment. Enough to buy a temple. You can now build a temple. This is a good thing with a capital G. Your town's impressiveness will increase. Select the temple from the construction menu, then place it down in your town. Some buildings require ore to be built. There are two sources of ore. The first is the ore mine. An ore deposit in the ground that can be mined by your villagers. There are also ore rocks. The villagers can mine these, but at the same time, you can add them to your storehouse yourself. No, that's not right. The green ring you see is the extent of your influence. Let's speed things up by using God Building. Pick up some wood or ore. Hold your hand over the temple and hold the action button to help construct the building. Well done. If you build a very impressive city, then people will come from far and wide to live in it. Civic buildings are a good way to increase impressiveness. Nobody gets hurt, and we get more followers, making us more powerful. Look, those people are migrating. They want to live in our town. They're bringing all their worldly goods. Hooray! People of all tribes will be drawn from far and wide to live in a good city. We'll beat our foes the clever way.
Look at that town. It's not dissimilar from ours. No, that's not right. The green ring you see is the extent of your influence. These people have come to join our town. Pick up their migration flag and drop it anywhere within our influence ring. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Great One, for welcoming us into your magnificent town. are where you can turn your people into warriors. Warriors who can take other towns and lands by force. Buying the armory is the first step towards having an army. Select the tribute menu. Ha! Huh, temple! Why build that when you can build an armory? Select the armory from the construction menu, then place it down in your town. form platoons. They're recruited via the flags on the top of the armory. Pick up one of the flags on the armory, then place it in the highlighted area. Dropping the flag will make a standard sized platoon. To recruit a larger platoon, hold down the action button, then drag away from the flag. Disciple breeder. Disciple breeder. Disciple breeder. Oh, armies are the best thing ever! But you're gonna need to keep them under control. So you need to know all about these here flags. Every platoon has a flag. You can see it held up high above the army and also in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Each platoon type has a different color and symbol on their flag to make them easy to identify. This one is a swordsman platoon. The flags also tell you what rank the platoon is. Those pips along the top indicate the rank, from raw recruits to seasoned veterans. 
If you click on the flags in the bottom right with the action button, you pick up the flag and gain control of the platoon. Click on the flag with the move button and you'll go directly to the platoon. And there you have it, the basics of army flags. Pick up the platoon flag, boss. Ready to go. That's perfect. Click on the highlighted right. area to tell him to go there. If you want to cancel an action and empty your hand, simply shake it briskly left and right. Okay, boss, let's get aggressive. With the platoon flag in the hand, click on the enemy town center. This will order your troops to take over the town. Off we go! An army marches on its stomach, and these guys will eat twice the normal rate. So keep an eye out on your stores. Oh dear, oh, you know it doesn't have to be war, leader. You can take towns by impressing them too. Ready to go. Onwards. Disciple breeders. Disciple breeders. Disciple breeders. Disciple breeder. Farmers. Disciple farmers. Way to go! 
your followers for our glorious war machine. Yeah, now you own this town. You can do anything in the Green Influence Ring, just like in your town, boss. Attack is the best form of defense. Get your armies out there. A newly created platoon starts at experience level one. And as they fight, they gain experience. When the platoon's experience reaches a certain threshold, they go up to the next experience level, and with it, their skills such as fighting and speed improve. Lastly, if you want to disband the platoon, drop the platoon's flag onto an armory and let those weaklings off the hook. You see, you can win by taking over towns using force. Or by impressing the people in those other towns. Yeah, war solves everything. Well, actually, Leader, you can win by a mixture of impressing and war, you know. Alas, the time of innocence draws to a close. You must take a step down the road of good or evil. And by the way, war is evil, and I'm evil. You get where I'm coming from? The time to choose, boss. Another important part of the toolbar is the Objectives menu. Select the Objectives tab to open it. Right, here you can find all the important tasks that will enable you to complete a land, and also some less important tasks that are just interesting to do. The tabs at the bottom right control which objectives you are looking at. Either all of them, or a selection from the total. The objectives window up in the top left also displays the objectives. You only need to complete the Gold Scroll objective to complete the land. But you learn more tribute by undertaking some of the other ones. Yes, you earn tribute for every objective you complete. Click on the Gold Scroll. Creatures waking up! He's scared. He doesn't want to leave the pen. Let's use the leash to get him to move. To grab the leash, click on the creature with the action button. Or you can just press the L key. Now, grab the creature's leash. He's been in the pen for ages. Make him come outside for a bit. Move him outside by clicking the action button once on the ground. Excellent. With your creature on the leash, you can move him or get him to do things. And more importantly, to do what you want him to do. Well done! That's how you get the creature to move. The creature's hungry. Let's feed him. With the leash in the hand, click on the field. That's better. He doesn't look as hungry now. Whenever you click the action button on something with the leash, the creature will try and find something to do with it. Double click the action button on that rock by the field, and he will be leashed to it. That's right. Marvelous. <laughs> Whoa! 
You should now teach your creature whether what he does is good or bad. Oh dear, he's going to eat a villager. You should teach him not to do that. Nonsense! Eating villagers will make him strong! Click and hold the action button on him. Move the mouse quickly from side to side to punish him for eating that person. Nah, move the mouse slowly. Pet him and reward him. Eating people's fine... You are well on your way to making your creature nice. Come on, we're meant to be bad. If you want to cancel an action and enter your hand, simply shake it briskly left and right. That is just about everything you need to know right now. Why don't you try experimenting with your creature? Thanks to your divine intervention, our people are saved from extinction and are now strong enough to survive on their own. Yeah, I think it's time we set out to teach these Aztecs a lesson. First, we need to restore our people to their former glory and visit all the other races to gather their support. Forget support? Where were they when we needed them, huh? Let's just conquer them. Come on, let's go. If you want to leave this land, click on the gold scroll. Hey you! Greek god! If you exist, I know you can hear me! My daughter's fallen pregnant! She says no man has touched her! It's an immaculate conception! So it must be down to you! You are responsible for the child! Pay me a dowry of 1,000 wood! Boss, you dirty dog! I know you had it in you! It wasn't him! We should find whoever is responsible and clear your good name. Something is amiss here, leader. Maybe you should see where she's going.
Johnson? I knew something was going on. You knew no such thing. Someone ought to let her father know about this. Believe it. I apologize. I'm so sorry for accusing you wrongly. I'll make sure the child is raised faithful and true to you. As our city grows, the greater the distance our villagers will have to travel. To aid their little feet, we can build roads. To build a road, grab an existing road by holding down the action button. Then drag out the shape of the road you want. When you're happy with it, click the action button. Have a go at building a road. Well done. What a beautiful sunset. Yeah, you gotta love a big ball of fire. Let's see it again. By clicking the action button on the sky, the hand will change to sundial mode. When the action button is released, the sun will move in the heavens. Ah, uh, power over the sun. But with great power comes great responsibility. Boss, show us how it's done. Well done, leader. But all light needs a shadow. Change the time to night. Well done. I need help. This rooster wakes me up every single day. I can't get enough sleep. Please help me to silence it. Maybe we can help him, leader. Such tasks do reap rewards, you know. Roosters always crow when the sun comes up. Perhaps if the sun came up a few times in a row, the rooster would keep crowing until it gets hoarse.
Well done. That irritating rooster has lost its voice. Disciple farmers. Disciple farmers.
Are you sure you wish to leave the land? Click again to confirm.